Hey, Droogies and Drugats to a new, and I'm happy to say it, 7th edition Warhammer 40k video. Yes, you heard right. This is not 6th. This is 7th edition I'm talking about here today. And we're going to be going back to the basics. I'm talking about army selection in the new edition, there will be two ways for you to build your army. And much of this is going to be coming from the current edition of White Dwarf, if you want to know. Uh, and I'll read a lot of it right here, right now, directly to you. Warhammer 40,000 now enables you to organize your army in two ways. Battleforged and Unbound. Battleforged armies are the standard armies that you're now playing in Warhammer 6th edition. They're going to be using organizing your collection into detachments using the force organization chart in the rules book. Fielding a battleforged army is straightforward enough, but we also wanted to provide a way for hobbyists to get the most out of their collection without being unfairly fettered. The result is using an unbound army. Doing this couldn't be simpler. Choose the models in your Warhammer 40,000 collection. Any ones that you want to use. Any. Pick whatever you like. Okay? Add up the points and play. That's the Unbound Army. So I don't know if you've ever played Hero Clicks or Mage Knights or any of the ones which have the little points on the bottom and you click it around. Uh, uh, this allows you to play 40K in that style. You can, you can pick up a, a, a Great Harlequin and a Greater Demon and an Avatar and an Imperial Guardsman and you just, I guess, they're going to have all have a point value and then you just make an army. You'll be able to do that in 7th edition. The next thing that they also add in 7th edition that's going to be exciting is a psychic phase to the game, much like the, the fantasy battle phase. I think there's going to be winds of magic and things like that too. Let's see what they say. One of the more involved topics that the rules team engaged with while developing Warhammer 40,000 was psychers and the nature of the warp. The relationship between the races of the galaxy and the warp is a massive part of what makes Warhammer 40,000 so compelling. Psychers are able to manipulate the warp to do incredible things. We've got all our favorite examples from the background, from rogue psychers turning hapless victims into pillars of blood, to librarians punching holes in battle tanks, or orc weird boys vomiting a torrent of raw energy. We all shared the conviction that they often lost out a little to other heroes, particularly those who were experts in close combat. Their concept was no less cool, though. Naha! <laughs> so what did they do? They decided to place fresh emphasis on psychers in 7th edition and make them as exciting to use in the game as they are to read about in the background fluff. The answer to how to make this work was twofold. First, introduce a psychic phase to the game and increase exactly what a psyker could do in any given turn. We also made sure that the psychic phase was scalable. That's why psychers lend their own psychic mastery level to the warp charge pool. That means the more psychers present on the battlefield, the more power you'll have to do spells or psychic abilities. They also are going to be introducing uh, the battle focus rule. This has the potential to increase the amount of psychic powers that you have at the start of the game. If you choose all your powers from the same psychic discipline, 
then you get the primaris power in addition which means that every psyker can have at least two powers to use this extra choice makes them more dynamic and flexible than ever before now let me tell you a moment just a moment for all my tyranid viewers out there i hope you're watching obviously tyranids have only the hive mind power go back four months to all the whiny little 40k players who said ah i want my pyromancy and blah 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 think about this now hive mind powers is one and everybody in battle focuses in the game that means all of them are going to get primaris power what is the primaris power i believe it's like synaptic linchpin isn't it it's a six inch addition to the synapse range this would mean that virtually every Tyranid Psychic, as long as you have two on the table, is going to get their synapse ranged increased by six inches. On top of that, don't forget fun guys like Zoanthropes, which Warp Blast is a Psychic Plower. And they're a Psychic Brotherhood. That means... If you get two broods of those, assuming your HQ isn't psychic, you've instantly also got Primaris powers on all of them, too. It's going to be crazy times in 7th edition, people. And I got a lot of videos coming up for you to tell you how to handle it. Yes, I know that makes people very happy. And I will see you next time. Until then, stay a happy gamer! Bye!